Welcome to new Savage S podcast and this time around it's all about the Frostcon and the FX Tech Pro 1. A very complicated name and a nice new company that is producing a QWERTY slider. So something like the Gemini PDA uh, that you can see here running with Savage S already. But they are doing it in a different way. They are doing it like uh, this basically. So you have a screen on the outside and you have to flip it up and then to reveal the keyboard. Um, if you never heard about FS, FX Tech before, it's a new company, relatively new company. And this is why they are also uh, supporting various different communities and especially the SaveRest community. There's Chen that already is known for the Moto mod, for the keyboard mod and worked on this and for Savage uh, as well. He's a Savage fan, so just like we are. And yeah, uh, I visited the, the FrostCon event, the community, Savage community meetup. Hopefully there will be more meetups, maybe next year as well, but hopefully in the region Bonn, Köln, uh, in Germany, there will be more, um, more, more and more meetups with new interesting uh, technologies. You can read all the specs about the device online, 6 inch full HD AMOLED screen, 6 GB RAM, 128 GB internal space, expandable via micro SD card, 12 megapixel Sony IMX363 sensor f1.8 and 5 megapixel depth sensor, 3200 mAh battery, physical keyboard layout, 5 rows, uh, 64 keys, staggered backlit um, and landscape. And there are different variants, and you can see this in the videos as well. Um, there are different variants of these uh, shown in the event, throughout the event, um, with different keyboard layouts and different hardware revisions as well as running different Safish S versions and also one version running Android. Uh, you can see here in the various different hands-on. Um, the device itself is pretty sleek. It is a modern looking device. It doesn't have a notch or something like this and uh, the mechanism is very very sophisticated looks and uh, feels like the old N950 if someone has this prototype or a development device still or the Nokia E7 and apparently they also asked and uh, maybe they worked together with the uh, old uh, designer from the Nokia days to design this uh, hinge mechanism to open up and uh, yeah, there's also easily repairable. You have to only unscrew one screw and then you can replace the keyboard, uh, go to have access to the different components, replace the battery if necessary. So it's also very repair friendly, which is a very nice addition to this. And yeah, there's one device also running in a more up-to-date Safe S version that has also uh, the auto rotation support already. And uh, you can switch between different ambiences already and you have different applications running. It's a community port, so Yola is not officially working uh, of, uh, on it, but um, uh, there are some community members who got uh, de their devices. The bootloader is unlocked, so you can just simply unlock and uh, install other operating systems, and Savages is one of them. And uh, yeah, a network was working quite nicely as well. You can surf and browse the web, and you can see also the kernel versions there inside. It's running uh, uh, version 4.4.153, I think, currently. And uh, yeah, it's um, a very uh, new kernel indeed and um, for an ARM device at least. And there are different keyboard layouts, I said it already. There's a interesting uh, yeah, caveat to the keyboard layouts because you can see the German keyboard layout in big uh, screen with Android version running uh, has uh, the um, shift key and the caps lock key and right next to it, uh, right next to the tab key, the Q, the A uh, key, and then the Y key next to the uh, next to the uh, brackets uh, and um, yeah this is a layout only for the German audience apparently the American audience uh, gets another layout a keyboard layout which is interesting which looks completely different a bit but you can see from the keyboard already it has control it has alt it has symbol keys it has tab key escape key uh, the delete key and uh, backspace key and also the full arrow keys are there so this is a good thing uh, the control key on the right i'm not so sure about it i would have have rather an alt key there probably 
But yeah, uh, we have to see. Maybe it's not the final version and maybe there will be some improvements still. Uh, the, uh, like I said, the American keyboard layout has a different, uh, slightly different um, option. So you can see there are some special characters right next to the tab key, next to the caps lock and next to the shift key. So when typing, I have, at least when typing, had the problem that I was hitting one of the symbols instead of the A key or what I wanted to. I have to shift to the right a bit. So maybe it's just something I have to learn and, and it's uh, quite easily to learn after a few seconds but yeah uh, this was one thing that I uh, noticed that the German keyboard layout felt a bit more natural maybe because I'm used to it but also when typing it felt a bit natural more natural um, because the keys were there where I liked them to be the keyboard itself uh, typing is very good typing experience is very good it's uh, not like on the uh, not like on the FX uh, the, uh, on the German IPDA uh, which has basically real keys and very soft key presses. It's a very hard one and it is basically the one that you have to, um, back in the Nokia days, the, the E7, I think is one of those devices that has a similar click to it. And uh, it's a satisfying click, uh, definitely. But the keys are a little bit small and it's a little bit wide. It's a bit, not, not as wide as the German IPDA, a little bit uh, smaller, but still uh, something you need to get used to. So we'll see uh, what the final version will bring. But uh, funny thing is, for those who want to take a look at uh, this, uh, there on the community event were some people also with the other half um, Yola keyboard case uh, for the Yola one and then comparison between the thickness and it's of course uh, a lot thinner that shows the technology moving on in this device. And uh, yeah, a lot, a lot thinner. And there's, uh, of course, also a comparison between the XA2 and XA2 with a case, uh, which is a lot, um, uh, which is a lot thicker than without the case. And it's not so much of a big difference, as you can see here, between the different devices, the XA2, the XA2 Plus, I think it was, or Ultra, I'm not sure. And uh, so the big, big, big uh, XA2 device and the FX Tech One. Uh, you can see the FX, FX Tech 1 being a big, um, thicker, but from in terms of, of, of uh, using it, uh, it has curved screen, and this curved screen feels good in the hand if you have it in your hand and uh, allows for an easy navigation as well. And yeah, this are, uh, these are some of the impressions I got from the event. Uh, the device itself is uh, pretty solid. Uh, as I said, also in this prototype um, stage, it was pretty solid. There are no big uh, problems with it. And um, the mechanism to open up the keyboard hinge was pretty, pretty strong. You had to find the, a lot of, uh, I had to put a bit of pressure onto it, but it was very, very solid and uh, very, very fine in using it. And uh, I liked that mechanism a lot uh, when opening up uh, the uh, device itself. Uh, the device itself comes with two camera sensors on the back, like I said, 12 megapixel and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. Uh, there was only one prototype that worked with a camera, but autofocusing was not working, so I'm not sure which camera was in use there. It was not very sharp, the photos coming out of it, of course, but it's an early community port, so you still have uh, to wait um, until this will be uh, ready. Uh, with Android, of course, I think it is already working. I did not try it uh, yet. It has a USB-C um, connection. You can connect not only um, the power, but also on, not only data, but you can also connect an MHL adapter and then also have screen output as something like this uh, and OTG support is well uh, supported. One of uh, those devices that I hold, hold in my hands uh, did, uh, didn't have uh, auto rotation, screen auto rotation on, so I had to play a little bit with it uh, to get it running somehow. And uh, yeah, uh, the navigation works, the system is fluid already, the Selfish OS is running here very, very fluid on this device. The only thing that, of course, runs a bit slower is Qt WebKit, but yeah, Yola has to update Qt WebKit anyways. Um, anyway, so. This was this, um, and then, of course, uh, for those who are interested in the processor, it's a Snapdragon Qualcomm Snapdragon um, 835, so MSM8998 processor. It's a little bit older processor, but still running very snappy. For Savage S, it's just like 
it's flying it's flying on this and you can see this in the last video where someone is scrolling through a long list of an uh, yeah development sd card late uh, or still in this device because the device has a hybrid sim slot so you can either put two sim cards inside or one sim card and one micro sd card and there was a micro sd card inside with lots and lots of partitions <laughs> and he was scrolling through this and you can see the speed of the device is just very very fluid and there's no problem with the uh, UI and lagging or something like this. So it could be a very, very good device running with Selfish S. The plan currently is not to ship Selfish S by default on it, but to have the community taking care of a nice community port. And when the Android version is out of the door, because it's the first big product by the company, they want to release something. If the Android product is out of the, out of the, uh, out of the door and, and people have these uh, devices, either they will uh, try to cooperate with uh, Yola, get a license and, and, and see if they uh, can put out an image for those people who have it already or maybe there will be special patches where you can buy the device pre-installed with ServiceJS but this is all still in the cloud somewhere and still an idea only so it's not very clear yet the same goes for people who like to install android and safe alongside which is currently not possible on the xa2 devices or x devices sony xperia x devices um, it is possible somehow with the gemini pda with the community ports but it's not uh, officially supported by yola um, could come as well but it's not there's no promise for it so it was a very nice uh, evening um, not evening yeah was it evening An afternoon basically mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, the device run, ran fine. There were a couple of caveats still. You can see that it's an alpha version of Surface S and a very early port, just like for example, audio was working fine. Video was not working for my, uh, if my, with my video player. So there was no problem. There was a problem um, playing back something just simply crashed. There was no error message or something. It just crashed the application and was stuck and I had to forcefully close it. Uh, it has stereo speakers, stereo speakers were working. Um, I did not check the, the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if it, this is working and have the same or has the same problem as the Gemini which uh, you can plug in headphones but it will not turn off the speakers which is a bit bad. The quality of the speakers hard to tell because it was crowded there and loud and uh, yeah I had to hold it like this to hear anything. So uh, it's not so loud that it will uh, make everyone look, hey, someone's playing music. So, um, but the stereo speaker setup, which is uh, pretty nice. And what was there else? Uh, there was a fingerprint reader as well on the side, side mounted fingerprint reader. I'm not sure if I have it in my video somewhere to see it. Uh, right underneath the button. So you have a button for uh, just like on a normal uh, device. Let me take a normal device. A normal Xperia device, for example, Xperia XA2. Uh, just uh, here you have the volume rocker. I'm not sure if this can be seen. You have the volume rocker and you have the power button, and then you have a fingerprint reader on the FX Tech, uh, which is just an area you have to press for fingerprint reading. Um, so I think I assume you have to press uh, the power button first and then. Uh, use the fingerprint reader as at least on Selfish S. It's not working on Selfish S currently with the fingerprint reader. I think as a fingerprint reader software is still proprietary, lots and lots of parts of it. It needs really Yola to either open source it somehow or uh, work together with the community um, people to make it work on the FX tech. And besides that, also just like on the XA2, it has a camera button. So the XA2, you can see it has a special dedicated camera button, two shutter button. So one uh, to press it a little bit to focus and then press uh, hard to take a shot. And the FX tech also has this. Camera button was not working sadly. But uh, yeah, it's an early prototype version. And nevertheless, it was a nice presentation and I hope you enjoyed this little information about the FX Tech. I think it's the world first seen FX Tech running Android in the wild and we could test it and, and run it and, and see things. Uh, I don't have it here right now, <laughs> otherwise I would uh, test the hell out of it. But I'm pretty sure you can um, uh, pre um, pre order it already for 650 euros. It's a bit oh, highly priced as you could imagine but it's very low uh, um, uh, low capacity um, production only so it's not like angry just in the millions of devices that they reproduce this is why it's a uh, higher price snapdragon 635 i would love to have at least a snapdragon 800 uh, 600? 835 sorry at least 845 would be nice 
nicer, nicer option. Not sure if they can manage to do it uh, somehow. At least mm. it runs snappy on Snap on the Snapdragon 835 with Selfish S. So no problem. The fastest device I saw running Selfish S on um, so far. And yeah, this is pretty much everything. If you have some questions still, you can ask them in the comments. I will try to answer them as much as possible. And um, yeah, this is everything for this little um, video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thumbs up, subscribe, and until the next time, bye.